Yeah, well, shout out to Marcus Carr. He's a very, a very tough kid. Um, he's obviously been given the league problems. So just going into the game, it was the main priority, and um, and the priority was just uh, contain him and get the ball. Uh, we'll keep the ball out of his hands. And I feel like as a team, we did a a, a great job. So, um, I think it was just uh, it was just a, a team a team defense effort, and I feel like we executed the game plan. Uh, my question for Gio. Um, can you just talk about that final stretch offensively? Uh, it seemed like you were playing with a lot of confidence out there. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I have great teammates, great coaches who who trust me with the ball in that situation. Um, you know, down the stretch, I was feeling good. Um, I was feeling confident, and, you know, luckily the ball was going in. But it was really about the stops. You know, we, we got a couple stops at the end. It was at, like I think it was four minutes left. It was a couple times we were kind of going back and forth on uh you know, they were getting a bucket, we were getting a bucket. But uh, those last couple possessions, you know, we we dug deep and got a couple stops. So that was really what mattered. We'll go to Brian Fonseca next and then Bruce Beck. Gio, you mentioned that stretch where you guys were switching buckets back and forth. I think the game had something like 22 lead changes. Uh, what do you think you learned about yourselves being able to win a game like that that's so back and forth and, you know, no one really knows where it's going until the final minute? Yeah, we just always talking about how having one agenda, and that's to win the game. So, you know, there was adversity. Um, there were some plays where it was ugly. Um, there was some play. We were down, I think, six at one point. I think it was, or yeah, or four, 52, 48, I think it was. But, um, you know, we just stuck together, and we're trying to win the game. That's our that's our one goal every single game, and, you know, we came out with a dub. Hey, Miles, um, when you think about where you guys were about two weeks ago, and where you are now, how do you think it came together? Uh, you know, the program that we were two weeks ago was kind of like, you know, we didn't really know who we were. We weren't playing to our strengths and stuff like that. Now, you know, after those two weeks, you've seen that, you know, we picked up on defense. Back, We're back to what we normally do. Uh, we know who we are now. You know, Doug Gio said we have the one agenda to win the game. And I think kind of putting that straight forward and, you know, putting that first before anything else, you know, kind of gets us to where – we put these games together and even today, like you said, it was a tough game. You know, it didn't, you didn't really know who was going to win till the very end. So just having that one mindset and, you know, playing defense like we normally do and rebounding the ball and stuff like that really put us over the edge. So I think it's more, we just got our identity together. And, and Gio, one for you. Uh, you're like the college version of Kyrie Irving in this area. You seem to in the fourth quarter in the NBA and in the second half in collegiate basketball, you seem to want the ball with, like one minute to go, whatever it is, you hit that step back rainbow, which was like unconscious. Just like what kind of pride do you take in being a guy who is clutch and who has the confidence to make that shot? Oh, uh, first of all, I appreciate the comparison. <laughs> I've heard that before, but um, it's not even taking pride in being clutch. I think it's just taking pride in, in being a winning player, being a winning team. Um, you know, I just I just really want to win. I hate losing more than I enjoy winning. And, um, you know, we when we had that five game stretch, like we all remember what we felt like after every single loss. And, um, you know, when I see my teams down and, you know, these guys really, you know, they trust me with the ball in that situation um, just to make a play, not even just to score, but just to make a play. And um, I feel like I can make winning plays down the stretch. And that's what I did today. Thank you. We'll go over to Aaron and then back to Jerry. Uh, yeah, for Gio, uh, just in terms of the team went 13 or 15 from the line in the second half. Uh, you've had a, a few good games this year as a team, but um, this is one where the free throw line helped you actually come back. Is this something that could actually build confidence for, for f the future as a team from the line? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, the confidence should should already be there, to be honest. You know, we, we have a lot of great shooters. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just a mental thing. You know, we just got to get to the, step up to the line and just shoot it. And um, we've been doing a lot of uh, practicing free throws in, in practice. And, um, you know, it showed today. So, yeah. Gio, what's it like having uh, Caleb back? I mean, the season started, you know, he's on the sidelines, didn't know if he was going to play. Now he's really changing these games for you. What's that like from your perspective? Yeah, just just a winner, um, you know, doing all the little things. You know, I, I told him at the end of the game, you know, he, he missed a couple of, of bunnies, but he didn't let that get to him. You know, the only thing he was thinking about was winning the game. The only thing he was thinking about was stopping Marcus Carr. Um, you know, that's that's what a winning program looks like, where, you know, things aren't going your way, but you still find a way. And, and, and ended up going his way at the end of the game. So that's just fighting adversity, staying with it, and finding a way to win. And 
I think Caleb embodies all that. And this is one more for any any of you three guys, but this is the first time Rutgers has ever won four straight Big Ten games. You guys have talked about coming here and making history. What does that mean to you? What does that tell you about this group? Uh, yeah, we were we were talking about it in practice. Um, every single every single game, every single day, we're trying to make a new piece of history. Um, we you know we did that today. That's that's all we we ever really think about is making history. That's what we all came here for. Um, you know, now we're all veterans, but you know we've been talking about it for a long time. So. This is what we expected, and, and now we're doing it. Thanks, guys. We'll go over to Bobby and then Richie. Caleb, um, what's this progression been like? You go from not playing to coming back, working off the rust, and having a game like this tonight. Just what has that experience been like as a whole? Man, well, uh, I feel like that's just college basketball, man. I feel like uh, some some kids uh, come into a program expecting, expecting all the bigger things, and um, – Expecting everything to go their way, but I feel like I feel like you got to keep fighting, and uh, and 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 that's one thing I tell I, I tell I tell the younger guys on this team is just is just you got to fight for everything, and that's one thing that Pike uh, also preaches as well, man. Uh, thing things might things things might not go your way, but you got to keep fighting, and um, you got to fight for opportunity, and when it comes, you just got to execute, and um, and and really just having a winner's mentality. I feel like I feel like helps as well. So just so just be a fighter, and um, I feel like I feel like that's what I am. Uh, this one's for Caleb as well. Caleb, I think you uh, you played the last twelve minutes and eighteen in the second half. Um, I guess it's a two part question. Number one, how how gassed are you right now? And then, uh, <laughs> oh two- man, uh, I I don't want to sound too gassed, but during that moment and uh, in, that, in, in that little stretch, I was I was a little gassed, but I, but, I, but after a few timeouts, I feel like I feel like I gathered myself. And, and then- uh, and, and then, I was able to keep playing. And then the second part, um, obviously you had your struggles in the first half offensively, and it kind of clicked in the second half. I think you went 50% from the field. Um, what was the big change between the first and second half? Well, it's just confidence and trust. Uh, I feel like my teammates just picked me up, and um, I feel like I came down the stretch and executed uh, because of them. They gave me that confidence just to keep shooting the ball and keep making plays. That's what I do, and I feel like – and uh, and really just big shout-out to my team just for picking me up. So – um, they had a big deal with that. So we'll go next to Brian Fonseca and then Jerry. Uh, you guys out rebounded. Uh, uh, sorry, this is for Miles. Uh, you guys rebounded out rebounded the team for the fifth straight game. You guys had a bit of a struggle of that earlier in the season. I think you guys got out rebounded five games in a row. Um, and so what's changed in that? And how important have you been to that? I mean, you got twelve rebounds again tonight. Just how much pride are you guys taking in rebounding again? Oh yeah, that's you know that's always a focus, especially you know after those games we got our rebound. It's like literally one thing we need to change is rebounding, and uh, we kind of just took that. I've taken that personally, you know, being I'm a center. That's kind of like my job. It's kind of like the main thing I do. And uh, shout out to Mission Man, the seven footer is it, it's not easy to rebound over a seven footer. If you guys think it's any type of easy, but um, so just happy to have the total rebounds. Happy to you know help the team win, and you know I'm always happy to rebound if it means we win games. So. Just that's the mindset you gotta have. Miles, that was like Patrick Mahomes throwing that alley oop lob. What? How often do you work on that? Oh yeah, me and Ron, I think we kind of just had a connection like that. You know, uh, the play, our one play like that. He sets the screen, and literally, if I see him have the one foot, I know he's gonna get it. I just put it up there, and you know, Ron always puts it in. So it's just a thing that we have and it's just a just a, just connection and stuff like that you know we're a big family and just knowing stuff like that you see a teammate you know he's going to get it you, you just put it up there and he gets it thanks a lot all right see see one last question for the guys from Alan Brightman uh Gio uh won three in a row at home now <laughs> has there been a little bit of an adjustment in terms of what it was like earlier this season learning how to play in the rack without fans and has the team kind of learned how to muster their own energy now down the stretch in, in these last games? Um, I, I mean, I think we've had good energy throughout the year, honestly. Um, I feel like our bench is always really into it. Um, you know, shout out to all those guys who, you know, aren't getting minutes but are coming to practice every single day and just, and just work hard. And, and then once we get to the game, they're just bringing a whole lot of energy. But I don't I don't think it was is really that much of an adjustment. You can make any game a home game, um, either here at the rack or away, like we've done. And, um, that's what we've been doing, so it's been working. 